Hi guys, and welcome to my Game of Thrones Season 8 review. Oh yeah, so uh, now Game of Thrones has come and gone. All eight seasons have now concluded. The end of an era, the end of one of the greatest television shows of all time. Well, the first seven seasons anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, Game of Thrones Season 8. Wow, this is a season which has really, really divided the Game of Thrones fan base. Uh, I've never seen so many rant videos on YouTube, so many people pissed off about how the season's ended, where it's all, where it's all gone. And, I'm one of them. Um, so, I'm, of course, I'm a massive Game of Thrones fan. Got the, the first six seasons on box. I haven't got season seven yet, but I loved season seven too. Um, yeah, been a Game of Thrones fan for years. Fantastic show. Um, and yeah, I was really looking forward to this final season. How are they going to end it? The final final six episodes. It's going to be epic. The war against the dead. How are they going to conclude it? And, um, yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, so... This is going to be a bit of a rant video, just so you know, um, but I'm not going to go there just yet. Um, for starters, I'm going to tell you all the things that I liked about this season, because there's still still things to like. It's not the worst season ever. It's not a pile of crap. No, there's things I liked. There's definitely things I liked. So I'm going to start off with the things I liked about season eight before I get into the things I didn't like. And believe me, there's quite a few. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with... Um, uh, the visuals. Fantastic. Um, as always, just like you can tell the budget for season eight was really big. Um, the the uh, set design, the costumes, the direction, the cinematography, oh, top notch in television. Best there is. Fantastic. It was film worthy. The dragons look incredible. The set design, everything you can tell. The direction was incredible. Uh, the soundtrack, the acting as always was top notch. Um, yeah, all in all those regards, it was a fan. It was top, a, a star, top notch, best show ever. That's why it was. I mean, especially towards the final seasons, that you can tell the budget went up more and more up, and it just got even better with each season. Fantastic. Some of the shots in the season are fantastic. Um, special effects, the CGI. Oh, it was incredible. I mean, I mean, it took like what fifty-five days they did to shoot episode three, the battle against the dead. So you can tell incredible um, crew and cast as always. Um, the soundtrack, probably one of the best soundtracks we've had this season, um, especially like the Night King soundtrack was incredible. The, the soundtrack to what in the finale, it was just some, had some great music. It was Podrick singing, we had, we had Florence and the Machine, The Weeknd even doing a song for the show. It was oh, it was really good. Um, soundtrack was always incredible. The soundtrack in all all eight seasons have been incredible, really, really good. It's always the acting is great, um, top notch. Peter Dinklage, of course, kills it as as a, as a Tyrion. Um, all the other actors were incredible. I thought, yeah, as, as always, the acting was incredible. Some really good moments, um, especially with uh, Amelia Clark. She had some great moments with Daenerys this season. It was really good acting. Um, yeah, because this is the end of Daenerys. This is the last time any of them are going to play these parts. So, yeah, they wanted to go out on a high in terms of the acting. Um, and then, uh, I don't want to... Okay, and also, there's going to be spoilers. I'm sure you know that right now, but... Um, I loved um, Clegane Bowl. Uh, yeah, this is something else. I'm, I'm going to talk about the whole season as a whole, but I'm going to get to the negatives in a minute. But So um, I thought there were some great moments. Clegane Bowl was incredible. One of the best moments of the whole season where Sandor finally con confronts his brother, the Hound, and they have a battle. Uh, they have a big fight in episode episode five. Oh, it was incredible. Really, really good. It was the way he wanted to get it. He was like, fucking die! for stabbing him. But you can't beat him. And he's too powerful. <laughs> and he just stabs him through the head and it just still doesn't work. And yeah, gets his eyes gouged out and the Hound's like, oh, and just oh and he just charges and they both fall into the fire it was such a good way to end his character um yeah one of my favorite characters was the hound a great great way um the battle sequences i thought were great you know in episode three uh with the battle against the dead the army of the dead i thought that was good you know for the, for the most part it looked great um even though it didn't make any sense why would you charge doth bracky first the battle tactics made no sense but <laughs> but it looked cool whatever with all the fire all the flames the shots the establishing shots kind of um, and the ending, the final episode, I thought the conclusions, like how it ended, like where it, where it left off, where, it, where everything leaves off and then that's it, no more Game of Thrones. I thought, I'm happy with it, where it's, where it's left off, but I'm going to get more to that towards the ending. But, you know, I thought the endings were solid. Ish, ish. So, uh, um, and that's really all I've got to say, positive-wise, about this season. Oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right then, if you don't, if you like Game of Thrones season eight, I suggest you stop watching because uh, there's going to be <laughs> okay. So yeah, I mentioned how good everything else was—the set design, 
the production, the direction, everything, the, the acting, the soundtrack, in terms of all that, it was top, top notch. But the writing this season was an absolute colossal failure. That what happened, D and D? What happened? They oh, they shit the bed. Is what happened. I'm sorry for my language, but what happened, D and D? The writing this season. It, so yes, season eight. The main criticism that's been hurled its way by all the fans and critics on YouTube and, and reviews have seen is that we've had character arcs that have just been ruined. Like seven seasons of build just poof, gone down the toilet. Um, lots of lots of it's rushed. Rushed, that's one thing I keep hearing, how rushed this final season has been. You know, they really have rushed it. Six episodes? I, I honestly, I had my doubts how they were going to wrap all this up in six episodes. And yeah, those those um, those concerns are well justified because I, it, it just felt rushed. So many rushed plot points. Like, honestly, there were, there were plot points that, that should have been established over a whole season. And then we got to them. But no, there were some plot points. Like, okay, I'm going to start off with... Uh, Daenerys going mad in episode 5, just burning everyone in King's Landing. I mean, I, can look, I, I, I know we were lead, leading towards her turning Mad Queen. I don't have a problem with that. It's just the execution of it, how they did it. It, it felt rushed, like she just she's in the belt and goes... <sighs> right, and burns thousands of innocent women and children and men. And you're like... What? Like... What? You should... <laughs> We should have had a whole season of that, of her getting, you know, going crazy. And then, then it happens. It just, boom, she's going crazy. Boom. And then it leads into the finale. And, okay, so I'm going off board. I'm going to start with the season starting off. So, okay. So, one of my first big gripes. So, the, I was going to start off with, the first two episodes, I thought episodes one and two, were solid. They were solid. They were, nothing, not much happened. They were really filler episodes, you know, building up towards the battle against the army of the dead uh, in episode three. They were really filler. But I thought episodes one and two were pretty much solid. Episode two was just basically kind of felt like a big go goodbye, like oh, a big farewell before loads of them, well, you think loads of them are going to die in episode three, but that didn't happen. So, <laughs> and yeah, I thought episodes one and two were great. And episode three happened, where the battle for Winterfell, the long night, yes, the army of the living against the army of the dead, this battle would be building up for so long, and I couldn't wait for it, you know, it had been heavily, it's like the biggest battle in television history, one of the big, it took, what, 55 days to film, days and nights, it was on a brutal filming schedule, it's going to be epic, it's going to be one of the biggest, most spectacular battles we've ever seen, and was it, was it, I, I, I mean, it, for a start, you couldn't see half of it because it was just at night. The screen was black, uh, and was it the battle? I thought the battle was good, but to say it was one of the best things ever. Honestly, I thought the battle of the bastards in episodes in season six was better. I thought the battle for King's Landing in season two was better. Um, I thought the battle for the wall, or oh, the Night's Watch in season four was better. I thought Hard Home was better in season five. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I just. I don't think it went that well. It was too dark. And also, let's talk about the fucking Night King. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, don't get me started on the Night King. So yeah, we spent seasons building up the Night King as one of the big ultimate threats of to Westeros. Like, ever since you saw him in season four, we, we turned the baby into an ice. And then season five, hard home. And season six, we kills the, um, the three-eyed raven. Then season seven, he kills one of Daenerys' dragons, you know, he breaks down the wall, you know, oh shit, and then dun, 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 see the army of the dead walking into, into the north, and that's how season seven ended, it's boom, oh shit, like shit's gonna go down, like, oh my god, season eight's gonna be so epic, and yeah, you think it's gonna be like that, don't you, yeah, 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 but, but no, the Night King gets killed off in episode three, by Arya Stark, she, I, I did not understand this. It really pissed me off. Like, oh, why did Arya get to kill the Night King? I'm just curious, what a complete waste of the army of the dead, the Night King, and the Night King. You, we'd seen them ever since season one. You'd built them up for so long, and you just axed them off in one episode in season eight. What you thought, I mean, how season seven ended, you think there's going to be an epic confrontation. The whole season's going to be the war against the dead. But no, episode three, poof, the night, I oh, just poof, stabs the Night King, piece of cake, poof, and they all die, Phantom Menace style, poof, and that's it. The army of the dead, no more. Night King, no more. That's it. That is what I felt rushed. I think 
Honestly, this whole season should have just, honestly, my opinion, should have just been mainly on the Night King and the Army of the Dead. What I should think should have happened, the, the Night King should have won. He should have won the Battle of Winterfell. More people should have died, too. I mean, the plot armour was ridiculous in episode three. No one, hardly anyone of significance died. Brienne didn't die. Tormund didn't die. Jamie didn't die. <laughs> Grey Worm didn't die. Just so many people who we thought were going to get killed off didn't die. And honestly, the death toll should have been much bigger. Like, who died in episode three? Uh, jo- Jorah died, which is quite sad. Um, Ed from the Night's Watch. Um, that little lady, to- lady, um, what she called? Uh, died. And Beric, Don- Beric Dondarrion died too. That was it. That was it. None of the main characters died. The plot armor was ridiculous. Like, and the Night King getting killed off really pissed me off. I really wanted to see him do some cool shit this season. You know, I wanted him to win the battle for Winterfell. Kill them all. Oh my god, how are we going to beat the sky? They all retreat. And the Night King and his army just keep marching down south. It been, that would have been epic. But no, they just get killed. It really pissed me off, man. You know, we spent so long building him up. And it... What a waste. What an absolute waste of the Night King. And that, that, just, that just clearly showed you how rushed the season was going to be. And then, yeah, episode four, five, and six was all about going down south to face... To face to face um, Cersei, and I like, honestly, um, yeah. So that didn't like that. Um, and I, I, there were so many rant videos on episode three, the long night. Uh, I've never seen I've done that episode specifically, but it got worse after episode three. You think okay, then but episode four, five, and six. Woo! So yeah. Um, so that's before I get onto the other thing. Let's talk about character arcs that I think were really ruined this season. Um, Jamie's character arc. I don't understand that. What happened with Jamie? You spent well, and at the first two seasons he was a dickhead. You get that. But season three was when he started to begin his road to redemption. Like when he was on the road with Brienne, he was in that, that bathtub scene about how, you know the um, the, the Mad King and burning them all. He said, and you know he started to become slowly but surely he started to become a good man. You know, and all the other seasons, you know. He started to become a good guy, you know. He went. He went down. He went down south to help. He went. Oh, he went. Sorry. He went north to help with the Battle of the Dead. You think this is gonna? He, went, he got hooked up with Brienne. You're like, oh, this is great. But then no. You think after all this build of, of being a good man, this big redemption arc. No, he just fucks. He fucks Brienne off like some fuckboy. He goes, no, I'm hateful. I've always been hateful, just like my sister. And he just goes back, back down south to be with Cersei. What? Uh, uh, yeah, what a waste of a character arc for Jamie. And then, and then the, okay, I'm going to skip a bit. Into the final, into the episode five. How Jamie and Cersei die is an insult. An insult to these great characters. You think they stay, they, Jamie and Cersei have been in the show since season one. The, Cersei especially, she's been the biggest, baddest, most horrible person all eight seasons. You just want to see her die so badly. And then when it finally comes to it, it's so anticlimactic. She, she's just hugging Sir Jamie like, oh, like no one but us. And then all these bricks, and they, they get, they die by brick, by a brick fall. Jamie and that's how they, you're gonna kill Jamie and Cersei off. It, that was shit. That was so bad. They deserved a much better send off than that, man. That mm, pissed me off. So yeah. The Night King getting a shit send off really, really annoyed me. Um, oh, and then Jamie and Cersei, the way they got sent off. Then John, John Snow's arc. What was the point of that? It, you know, we teased it ever since the end of season six, where you find out, oh crap, he's a Targaryen. Oh my god, this is gonna be huge. He's he's gonna be the rightful king. It's gonna be tease tension between him and Daenerys. And yeah, we built up more in season seven, and then and then you find out in uh, and then you find out more about his lineage. And then Sam tells him in episode season eight, and yeah, you think oh, it's gonna be huge. And then so, so now we're moving into the finale. John, he, after Daenerys goes crazy, yeah, and, and, so, and we all knew it was coming. Yeah, John, he just stabs Daenerys in the throne room. Like what? That, that's how you're gonna kill off Daenerys? She's been one of the main characters since season since season one, and you're just gonna kill off with a little stab off. Like, oh. like that's it. And then then Drogon burns down the. Th- Burns down the throne, which was a pretty cool visual. Like I know it's metaphorical. It's burning down everything the throne represents because the throne killed an heir. It's not John, and all that. And he takes off, and then, and then John just gets taken prisoner, 
And then, so then, and this is a little transition when they find out a few months later, um, a few weeks later, what's going to happen. And um, they all decide on what John's fate's going to be. And uh, yeah, and the, the, before they do all of that, they decide who the ruler should be, like how Westeros should be run. And you won't believe who they pick to be the new king of the, well, the Six Kingdoms. Bran. Bran. Bran! <laughs> Bran! Everyone's, everyone's least favourite character, Bran. <laughs> Literally, if you, st no one, and I repeat, no one thought Bran was their favourite character, admit it, no one. I mean, Bran's okay. He's the, I know, he's the Three-Eyed Raven, he's cool and all that now, ever since he turned into the Three-Eyed Raven in season seven and all that, but just, oh, oh, Br Bran. It's such a weird pick, and I do I do get that he's gonna be he's gonna be a great king. You know, he's, he's all knowing, he sees everything, he's all wise, he's all knowing. But don't you think there's a bit of a plot hole here? Because he's not Bran anymore. He's the Three Eyed Raven, and this Three Eyed Raven consciousness has existed in that tree with the Three Eyed Raven for, for millennia. You know, ever since the the first men, the Three Eyed Ravens existed, hasn't it? It's this all knowing consciousness that's inhabited Bran, and that all knowing consciousness now, the Three Eyed Raven, is now king of Westeros, and you're like. I think that's a little bit dodgy. It's not Bran. It's the. Th <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then John, John gets sent back up to the Night's Watch as punishment for killing Daenerys. I'm like, what? So what was the point of him being a Targaryen? It went nowhere. It, it, he just gets sent back up to the wall, and you're like, off oh, of. So what, what was the point of him getting brought back from the dead? The prince that was promised, the Azor as a higher prophecy. All that, you think he's going to be the king? No. He just gets sent back up to the wall. He says goodbye to Sansa, to, to Arya. Arya's like, Arya's going west of Westeros to go find out what's there. She's going to be an adventurer. Sansa becomes queen in the north because she's a power-hungry little cow. <laughs> just kidding, I like Sansa. Um, and yeah, and Bran's the new king. So it, it ends well for the Starks. Tyrion becomes his new hand, which is cool. I love the new small council too with their Bronn, um, Brienne, Oh, Davos and Sam, that was pretty cool. Uh, and then Sam's like, a song of ice and fire, and you're just like, book reference. <laughs> and yeah, but, and then John gets sent off to the wall to like, but what's the point of the Night's Watch? Should the Night's Watch even exist? Because there's no White Walkers anymore. Yeah, great, thanks for that. The, the, the Wildlings aren't a threat anymore, they're all allies, so what's the point of the Night's Watch now? And don't, let's not forget, there's still a massive big bloody hole in the wall that the Night King left. So anyone can just walk straight through into the north. So what's the point of the Night's Watch? And also, wasn't the whole point of him going sent up? Because that's what the Unsullied agreed to, because Grey Worm can't forgive John for what he did. But now the Unsullied, they've all sailed off to North, so John could just stay, couldn't he? Now all the, John didn't have to go to the wall. He could just stay. God, man. Not a good ending. It's, it's, oh, I, it, man, I'm sorry. I've, I've, got, I've got off on one here. It's 20 minutes, fucking hell. Um, yeah, and Tyrion's just a, a moron in the last two seasons. I mean, the quality of writing, you can tell. Okay, now I'm going back a bit, sorry. The quality of writing really dropped, I think. As soon as they went off the books, I think, the, I think they went off the books, I think it was somewhere in season five, I think. I think season five was the last season they went was on the books. So season six, seven, and eight were all off the books. And season six was a solid season. And season seven, people don't like. I, I thought season seven was good. But you can tell the quality got a little bit lower. Like, seasons one to four... One to four were incredible. That, that's when the show was in its prime, the first four seasons. Incredible. But you can tell the show really kind of, the writing kind of went a little bit downhill. As soon as they went off the books, it was obvious. And the show became more about fan service, about set pieces, about action set pieces, instead of crucial storytelling. And people hate D&D. People hate them for what they've done with this final season now. <laughs> they've gone off to do Star Wars now. Yeah, I'm going to keep going back to what I said. It was rushed. This final season was rushed. They rushed through so many plot points and they didn't need to. We should have got another season. I, I really think we should have got another season. We, we needed one more season to finish this off. I honestly think this season should have been about the, 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 the war against the army of the dead and maybe it ends with Cersei getting killed. Yeah, that's how the season should end. And then it ends with, with Cersei's downfall and a big battle. She has a big send-off. That's how this season should have ended. And season nine, the final season, should have, been, should have been all about Daenerys, you know, being the Mad Queen. And then it ends with Daenerys being top, 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 um, top side, um, being um, over, overruled and um, defeated. And then Jon, Jon, who should have been the king, becomes the rightful king. That's how... It should have ended with nine seasons because it, it just felt too rushed. Six episodes was not enough, even though like four of them were like 80 minutes. It just was too rushed. 
Too many rush plot points. The Night King getting wasted, just wasted. The Night King thing really pissed me off. Yeah, so that has been my rant on Game of Thrones Season 8. I'm sure I've missed out quite a lot, but I'd be here for an hour if I said everything I needed to say. And it's a shame, because I love this show. I loved this show for seven seasons. I really, really, really wanted this final season to be the, the amazing swan song to get to this fantastic television show. And, and it wasn't. The writing let it down so much, so rushed. Awful writing. The plot armour, the character arcs ruined. Uh, John doing fuck all, all season. Honestly, he was a side character, John, this, this season. D- Danny becoming mad queen like that. No. It was too rushed. I'm, I'm not the only one. People think I'm being on crybaby. Ooh, it's not, not how I wanted it to end. There's so many fans who agree with me. Like, I've seen all the rant videos on YouTube. I've seen... There's so many rant videos. These are probably more rant videos on YouTube than there were for Star Wars, The Last Jedi. That's saying something. And yeah, it's just... It's... Oh, and I, it's ish it's a satisfying ending because at least we got to see Arya go off and do her own thing. It was a satisfying, happy ish ending, wasn't it? Bran's all through our ravens, the new king, not Bran. Um, Sansa's queen in the north, you know. And at least John at the end, when he's, on, he's behind the wall, he's going beyond the wall with all the wild. After the show ends, he's going beyond the wall with all the wild. It's very much how the first season end, the first episode ended. Well, the first season started, so the first. Fucking hell. The first episode started, wasn't it? The pilot, where they're all going, the Night's Watcher going into the woods. And yes, John does smile, because in a way he is happy. He got to pet Ghost, that was cool. And he gets to just march off with his friends. And he sees smiling, because in a way he's, 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 he is now the new king beyond the wall. He gets to be king beyond the wall. And he does smile, because he's, he's with Tormund, he's with all his Nightwatch brethren, he's with people who accept him. But I did feel really sorry for John. <laughs> like, I think he deserved better than that. But yeah, that was that. <sighs> yeah. So that was Game of Thrones Season 8. I'm sure I've missed a bit out, but that, that was my main rant. Um, yeah. It, it, it was... It, it was... Okay. So, uh, yeah. If I had to... And I'm the only one, like... Look at, if you look at the Rotten Tomatoes score, which I'm going to end with... Um, Rotten Tomatoes, which is what Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes is. It's the main critic aggregate feed that's used for films. Like, it takes thousands of fan fan reviews and hundreds of critic reviews and aggregates them to a percentage score. And Game of Thrones did so well. Like, the first season got 91%. Season 2 got 96 Season 3 got... Ni- season 3 got 96 Season 4 got 97 Season 5 got 93 Season 6 got 94 Season 7 got 93 But Season 8... Got 67% overall. That's how... And I've seen that the IMDb scores too are really low. So, yeah, man. Uh, and yeah, I know there's been a petition by fans to get it redone by over a million people. But that, that's not going to happen. But I think that's more about sending the creators a message. And yeah, it's oh, it's a shame. Because I really wanted the show to have a good ending. It deserved a good ending after seven amazing seasons. But it's what it is, man. It is what it is. Disappointing. And... um. I don't think that's it for Game of Thrones, though. I do think... Well, it's already been confirmed. We already are getting a prequel series. That's already been... That's already started filming, basically. I think that's going to be about the First Men, the, the, the origin of the White Walkers. We might see more of the Night King there, hopefully. Um, and then... And yeah, so the Children of the Forest. and that, So we might see more of that. So we might see that in a few years' time. Hopefully that can be good, um, because Game of Thrones Season 8, oh, I'm very disappointed with. Um, if I had to grade each season... Um, season one, a star. Season two, a star. Season three, a star. Season four, all the first four seasons were incredible. The first four seasons, a star. Season five was a bit slow, a bit sluggish, but I think it ended ended very well. So I'm going to say season five probably gets a B plus. Or season six probably gets an A because the Battle of the Bastards, the whole thing at the end. Season six was great. Season seven probably gets a B plus because it relied too much on set pieces, not character development and all that. But season seven was still great. And season eight probably is going to get a B minus, maybe even a C plus. Yeah, man. Lots of things I don't like about the season, and I'm not the only one. But yeah, what did you guys think of Game of Thrones series eight? Did you think it was a good conclusion, or are you bitterly disappointed like me and so many other fans? Um, yeah, guys. So thank you all for watching. What did you think of Game of Thrones season eight? Comment below. Let me know. So thank you all for watching, guys. And uh, yeah, is what it is. But um, yeah, Balamoulis. <laughs> Bye.